please stay uh, hope for the video till end we have a uh, case discussion at the end of the video so temporal arthritis is the most common vasculitis it is quite common uh, in females and uh, especially females uh, more than 50 year they are clearly predisposed to uh, temporal cell arthritis they are more predisposed to temporal arthritis compared to that of uh, males and uh, the nomenclature has been uh, derived uh, due to uh, more involvement of temporal arteries but here uh, ophthalmic art branches of internal carotid artery can also get involved so temporal artery and ophthalmic branches and some other arteries as well can be involved by this uh, vasculitis so uh, the idiopathogenesis lies in the t cell mediated immune re uh, reaction to some unknown uh, blood vessel antigen and uh, so that results in a kind of a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and uh, that culminates in granulomatous inflammation of blood vessel the role of uh, uh, inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor and anti endothelial cell antibodies have also been uh, implicated and as well as there are some uh, msc type 2 haplotypes that have also been identified in the causation of temporal arthritis so the vasculature, as I was telling you, uh, the temporal artery is the most common one apart from uh, that occipital artery, ophthalmic artery, some uh, other arteries like uh, posterior ciliary artery, subclavian arteries. These are the different uh, branches that can, uh, these are the different arteries that can get involved. So uh, the characteristic features include the cord-like thickening, nodular thickening of uh, temporal artery, that is the hallmark of temporal arthritis, and that is seen in almost all the patients. And microscopy uh, shows a granulomatous inflammation of temporal artery. There is fragmentation of internal uh, elastic lamina, as well as the tunica intima becomes uh, quite uh, thickened. And uh, often there is a thrombosis formation as well. And the, you may see a large number of multinucleated giant cells, uh, but a well-formed granuloma uh, usually is not uh, observed. So you can see uh, the nodular thickening over here. Uh, this is the most common feature by which this kind of vasculitis is uh, usually identified clinically. And uh, microscopy, as you can see, multinucleated giant cells are clearly seen. And here you can see the tunica intimal uh, thickening and the fragmented elastic lamina, uh, which is uh, demonstrated by doing special uh, elastic tissue stains like Van Giesen and all. And uh, here again, you can see the multinucleated giant cell in the microscopy and the fragmented elastic uh, lamina, you can see this uh, multinucleated giant cells. So the key uh, clinical events include the fever, fatigue, weight loss, the temporal uh, headache is the most common symptom. Fever, fatigue, and weight loss are the systemic symptoms. Temporal headache is the most specific symptoms uh, by which the person is usually clinically noticed. And also the sign include the painful, enlarged, and tender, and nodular temporal artery. And uh, uh, there is, uh, again, the patient uh, can have some accessory uh, manifestations like uh, polymyalgia rheumatica. Now, this is a kind of an inflammatory disorder in which uh, you will see generalized muscular aching and stiffness, which is more predominant in shoulder and hip uh, joint. So, so there is some kind of an autoimmune phenomenon, and this is an inflammatory disorder, which is clearly linked with temporal arthritis. Now, uh, due to ophthalmic uh, artery involvement, uh, various visual symptoms uh, may be manifested, like uh, it can be an abrupt presentation of diplopia, a double vision or it could be a temporary or permanent blindness can also be manifested. In coming to the investigations, so biopsy is clearly the hallmark of temporal arthritis. That is the definite uh, definitive diagnosis. And uh, uh, the biopsy, you must be uh, careful that at least one centimeter segment of the, bio of the artery has to be biopsied because it's a very focal granulomatous lesion. So a negative biopsy uh, will not rule out the disease. The positive result is only seen in 60% of the cases. Clinical features plus biopsy results both have to be 
uh, interpreted simultaneously. ESR is an adjunct test in which uh, it's a collaborative test. Usually the patients of temporal arthritis have a very high ESR and ESR can be more than uh, uh, 100 mm at the end of one hour. That is usually seen in the patients of temporal arthritis. The treatment uh, strategy includes the corticosteroids are given promptly to prevent blindness. Anti-TNF therapy like infliximab and more recently some monoclonal antibodies have been also uh, devised against the TNF. So all of these have a promising role in the treatment of temporal arthritis. Now uh, let's end uh, the presentation with an interesting case scenario. So 61 year old male, uh, oh, sorry, female presenting with headache in the temporal region and there is a pain in the jaw while chewing and there are muscle aches and pains. And so this was the way as we had discussed in the, uh, in the presentation. So usually the patients present with muscle aches and pains, develops problems with vision and other important features. And on examination, uh, the person, uh, the patient has nodular and palpable temporal artery. IFC of uh, the temporal artery uh, revealed granulomatous inflammation with giant cells and lab finding shows elevated ESR. So the diagnosis that was conferred was giant cell arthritis. So this is the classical uh, case presentation in which all the features are there. Sometimes you may not get all the features. You have to uh, correlate clinically with the biopsy finding ultimate uh, uh, diagnosis relies with the biopsy, but uh, as it is focal lesion, so negative biopsy lesion may not uh, rule out the disease completely, both clinical and biopsy results have to be interpreted uh, simultaneously. So uh, this is how the case presentation of temporal arthritis uh, is being done. And this uh, is the way you can have uh, in your MCQs, uh, the features of temporal arthritis. This is with the way you can diagnose temporal arthritis. So that's all for uh, this presentation. Thanks for the patient hearing and uh, we'll be uh, seeing another uh, interesting topic uh, soon in the next video. So thank you all.